Welcome back to Channel Water. Today we're going to talk about life in space. What should we expect? How can we find it? And what does it mean to find a, an alien species or life that is not part of our body of consciousness? I'm going to make a few videos about this subject, but for now we'll start with an introduction to understand astrobiology, to understand the connection between water and life, and how that can help us in understanding what will we find in outer space, and also when do you really find an alien, something that is not part of our body of consciousness. Let's start with a few simple facts that some people don't know, and I encourage you to research it for yourself to know that it's true. There is a lot of water in space. A lot of people are not aware of that, that water is something that's very abundant, we can find it almost everywhere, and there's a lot of it out. The further you go, the more we find it. And water is not from this planet. Water, in a way, is an alien to planet Earth. So it's important to see our planet as a rock, just like the Moon, Mars, any other rocks that are floating in space. And on this rock, there is water, in this case held by gravity or by its own force. Water in space always creates spheres, so it's like water is holding itself together around this planet. But water is not something that was originated here on this planet. So there is a lot of water in space, it's not from Earth. We don't know how old water is and we don't know where it came from. So those are just simple facts that can help us understand the relationship between water and the different planets in the universe. Of course, when we want to look for life in space, we need to understand how life is created and what is the origin of life? What should we look for? Here, in our science here, we are kind of stuck because we have a theory of evolution which claims for randomness, no meaning, no purpose, things just happened and there's no clear idea of who is doing what or how. And that's why I like the field of astrobiology because over there we don't look at any of those ideas or narratives, we just look at the conditions, the materials needed and then hope that life started under those conditions. Of course, with the theory of evolution, we claim that it happened over a lot of time, that time is the main factor here. But the reality is that if you have water, the right materials, under the right conditions, so it's water, building blocks, and energy, heat, life will start, you will have life knowing that water is the agent that is building that life. For scientists that don't want to go that far, they just say, okay, we know that we need um, the mat certain materials, we need certain amount of energy, heat, sun, and then we haven't found yet life in the world, in the universe, that is not water-based. So we know that water is the most basic element it's the one condition we know we have to have. I personally really like the field of astrobiology and it's very connected to channel water because we look at life in the same way. We look at the, how life is coming to be just based on those basic conditions. First one, water has to be there. Second, what state the water is. Is it liquid? Is it ice? Meaning, is there a source of energy? Heat and then the building blocks, the materials available for life to be created, to be built, the architecture, the structures. Here in Channel Water we go even further, we say there's no water without life, meaning life is within water. So when you find water, you find life, it's within the water. So when we go to another planet and we find water, and then if we find liquid water, the next question is not, are we going to find life? The question is, in what stage of the known evolution we will find life? 
So if we know that we have architecture, water is building from the ground up, cells, bacteria, organisms, then you have plants, animal, people. In that map of evolution, the question is where are you going to find life? At what stage? So given the different materials, conditions, for example, if it's warmer, life can move forward faster. If it's cold, life will move slower. So you can tell sometimes how far ahead life could be, how advanced it is, what kind of structures you will find based on the conditions that are in that, on that planet, basically. For example, right now we have two missions. One is going to Mars and one is going to Europa, a moon around Jupiter. So on Mars, we know that there's traces of water and we saw movement of liquid water in the landscape. So over there, we're going to find, we're going with the hopes of finding traces of bacteria, of some kind of structures, basic structures that were built by water with the materials available. Because if there was liquid water, there are high chances that that water was able to build. On Europa, we know that there's a layer of water underneath the ice. So it's an icy moon. There's a layer of ice covering the whole moon. And under that, we expect to find a layer of liquid water. And then on Europa, we've seen plumes coming out from the surface, which helps us understand that there's probably a source of heat in that planet. So now we have the basic elements we need. We have heat, liquid water, and the materials available on that planet. So we could find a very complex oceanic life under that ice. So one of the plans is to go to Europa, dig through the ice and see what we find in that ocean. We also might possibly find um, frozen skeletons or you know debris of living creatures that are frozen on the surface of Europa. Conceptually, we believe that life is alive. So for us here, the idea is not, are we going to find life? We know that life is alive anywhere in the universe. The only question is how active or passive the water is. So when water is frozen, it is actually frozen in time. It has the potential but it doesn't have the energy to fulfill and to be active and build and create. So for water to be frozen, it's basically to be helpless, frozen in time. It has no movement. And then as water heats up, it, it gets to the ideal state, which is liquid. When water is liquid, it's fully connected, it's creative, it can build, create. And then if we push it a bit further, too far, water becomes steam, evaporates, and then it loses those connections, and it doesn't have any more that ability. It's almost a, like, if you think about the society of people that is too dispersed, there's no communication between them, they're all individuals, and they can't collaborate. So liquid water is like a connected fabric of consciousness that is able to communicate, create, build within that space, within that substance it uses matter and it can build structures. So if we go back to that triangle of water, energy, matter, when we go to another planet, we know that we need water, energy. And now the question is the matter itself, right? So the building blocks, they have different shapes, different forms, different ways that you can combine them together. So we might get to another planet and find life forms that have different colors, textures, architecture in their structure based on the available materials that water can build with. So that's not different from if you travel the world and you meet different people in different sites. The architecture most of the time is site specific. So the materials that are available on that site will determine a lot of what the architecture that is possible. So the same way it will be on different planets as we travel the universe. 
we will be able to build different type of structures. We will find life forms that have built different type of structures, depending on the available materials. If we find another planet that is similar to us, has the same element, water, energy, we might find very similar life forms, very similar bacteria, plants, um, very similar life cycle, basically. So the architecture of life is site-specific, meaning the materials we find on that site, but also the environment it's in, right? So if the environment is cold, hot, windy, dry, maybe you're underwater, like Europa. So everything you'll find will be basically like life here in the ocean. So the environment is an element that is not active in creating the structures but it is an element that affects the conditions that water is building its architecture under. So exactly the same like our architecture and our structures. If you live in a rainy place, you will have a certain type of a house. If you live in a hot and dry area, you'll have a different kind of house. If you have earthquakes, fires, wind, each one of those elements the environment, the conditions will affect the way that we build our architecture. So again, if we look at that idea of evolution, the environment is not what creates, it's what we shape our architecture against, right? So there's a creative force here building, and then there's an environment that we react to and build within. On Earth, we can see such diversity of life, we haven't even found every life form here. We hardly explored our oceans. But one thing we know for sure is that there is not even one life form that is not water-based, that is not created by water, in water, and in it itself is a vessel of water. We have found life on this planet that lives without light, without oxygen, without heat, um, even outside of the atmosphere. So we can see that life will evolve to any possible condition, but there's one thing that it never ever evolved to be without, is water. So now we're going back to that field of astrobiology where we know that water is what gives us the potential for life and life itself. Now when we go to other planets, we will find different structures, different life forms, but if they are water-based, that means that they actually belong to our body of consciousness. They belong to our biology. They just might have different architecture, different homes, different structures to the cells, the walls. It's really the homes, the walls, the structures that will be different. But if the water is the same water that we're based on, then we're part of the same family. We're part of the same life form, just in different homes. And that's something that conceptually it's important to understand. Because when we think about finding aliens or something that is other, what is that other? To find a true alien, you will probably have to find a different kind of liquid altogether. Something that cannot mix with us. So if we find some kind of an alien form, and maybe we can't physically, because of the different technology, the different architecture, mate and actually procreate with them, but when they die, Let's say the water in their body dissolves and goes back to our body of water. So in that way, we do merge together. And that's the meaning and the possibility of merging together with another life form from another planet, as long as we're both water-based. But to find life that is completely different from us, a true alien life form, it will have to be based on a different liquid, and we don't really know. It might be a different gas, a different material altogether that we never conceived of. But from our research here, what we see is that when matter, the passive matter, 
reaches the point of consciousness, it becomes liquid. Liquid means active. It has the possibility of moving, building, making. That's really the idea of water. To me, water is not even a thing itself. It's just pure consciousness. And any matter can become water, can become conscious in a way, if it transitions to that place of having a will, a reason, and a goal, something that it wants to do. So it's possible to find a completely different kind of element that became conscious, that is liquid. And if that being is not water-based and cannot mix with us, that means that that's a true alien. And then even further, the interesting question, is it a completely different body of consciousness? Or is it basically another branch from the same original body of consciousness we all come from? So those questions can go very deep, but right now we're trying to just look at if we go out to near planets in our solar system, in the universe, what can we find? What should we expect? And that's really how we should look at it. A is the life form water-based. And then how far within the evolution line it is right now. And we can estimate those things more or less according to how long the water was liquid, how warm or cold it is, and then we can build a timeline and know what we can expect to find. I encourage you to see a few videos we have on this subject just from a different perspective. One is the space aquarium where we show that basic structure. It's a very short video about the triangle of water, energy, matter, and how those three together is the basic conditions we need to create life in space. Then we have water, the body of consciousness, and that can explain a little bit about how water is the active agent that is building and making, and all life on this planet is based on that. And then we have water, the architect of nature, where we dive just to the more technical side of cells. And when we look at cells, how we see the architecture, just like in our homes, we see that within cells and it fractals up, right? So those videos could help in understanding why water is so important for the building of life in space and why we look for water. And also, we want to be able to move forward now and talk specifically about locations we're going to, like I mentioned, Mars, Europa, and other planets. And I'll make specific videos about each one of those and what we found there and how it matches our theories. Because what we find on those planets will either confirm or deny our claims here about water and the role of water in building life in space. I want to go back to the fact that there is a lot of water in space and most of it is frozen. And we'll make a completely different video about time because it's important to know that when water is frozen, it's actually frozen in time. Time and temperature, it's one element together and it's a, a way for us to measure movement in space. So when water is frozen in time, it's helpless and it's actually the worst state for water to be. And something that's a bit more conceptual, but I think important to understand what is happening here on the planet and the universe around us, I believe that it's our duty and that's part of our purpose, is to reconnect with water in space and bring that water back to the cycle. It's almost like we have family members that are just frozen out there in time and we're the ones at least here that we know of, that are able to go out there and bring back that water into the cycle, defrost, bring it back to its liquid ideal state, bring energy, warmth, and by that basically save that water. So that is a concept and a point of view that I don't think we st yet have in the mainstream, but that's really part of what we're doing. Anywhere we will go, we will go and we will harvest the water there, bring it back to the cycle, 
and basically expand life forward with that water by using that water and and basically consuming it from the point of view of human beings for agriculture for ourselves and as, as we multiply in space but actually what we're doing is we're bringing back water from being frozen ice into our stream into our cycle of life and for me that's the number one mission so whether we know it or not that's what we're doing we're looking for water we'll find it and we'll bring it back to the cycle especially as we go out to space and expand and grow and live on other planets or in space stations however that will take place i know that we keep talking about the big bang as the beginning of life but i think it was more like a big splash and it's possible that maybe before that happened we were one body of water we were this one planet of water in the universe and all the water was there clear liquid connected this one body of consciousness and then something happened some event could be a certain kind of explosions or physical something happened that made that body of water basically splash out and and explode out to space and as we know in this cold open space water will freeze without the proper energy source so you can imagine that happening and then water just disperses out to space frozen in time fragmented so we have this body of consciousness that is now fragmented out in space and then in different places where there's heat that water will start melting and becoming liquid again and will start building and making spaceships vehicles like us that will allow it to find its way back and connect with the rest of its body it's almost like magnetic force between all the different pieces and fragments that are trying to get back together and i believe that that's what we're doing and that's part of why why should you even expect different life forms in space to search each other or find each other there's actually no reason for that but that is part of the basic reason of it there's a certain sense of returning and finding that connection and unity and connecting that whole bigger body of water and we don't even know yet what the future of that is what the next step of our evolution let's say that we do find and is are able to create that space again and it's safe for the water to be there and maybe it will be again all liquid clear warm in one place so it's an interesting concept to think about and to wonder and at the same time you can see that it doesn't matter how you frame that story and that concept that is actually what we're doing and that's where we're going in that way so in that story of water or the planet of water that exploded out to space fragmented now the main question is who wakes up first and where and as far as we know here we're the first ones the only ones and in our environment where we are it's our task to do that to go out seek the water that is frozen in time and bring it back to the cycle and that's an interesting concept i believe there's probably more places that water has melted and has built and is building and over time we'll see what we'll find at what stages so whoever is further ahead will of course take the lead and find more bodies of water bring them back to the cycle but so far as far as we know we are the ones doing that so based on the knowledge that we have as far as the amount of water that's out there in space knowing that water is active and will build under the right conditions i can tell you that we're most likely not alone in space that there's many different life forms being built right now and life starts from scratch every day on this planet 
So we don't even need to wonder whether the chances that another evolution started somewhere else, it has. If water is liquid, the right conditions, it has. So experiments have been done in the past that prove that water under the right conditions will start creating amino acids and the basic structures needed to create life. The funny thing is that the scientists themselves didn't believe their own experiment and thought that probably soil they were using or the water was contaminated and had something in it that started life. But water will start life from scratch every day. So most likely we are not alone in the universe in that sense. Most likely most life forms that we will find are actually part of us, part of our body of consciousness. The water that came to this earth and built life here is the same water that will probably build life on other planets. And in the rare case that we find a completely different life form based on a completely different liquid, that will be a much more interesting situation and a much more interesting philosophical question of the bigger body of consciousness and the origin of life in general. So today I just wanted to give you this really basic introduction to understanding water, life in space, the connection between them, what we can expect, what we should look for and how, and also the concept of what are we doing, the fact that there is a bigger body of consciousness, there is a bigger body of water in space that is now fragmented and frozen in time, and how we have a task, we have a part in bringing that back to the cycle and reconnecting the bigger body of consciousness once again. So today, this is the main thing I wanted to tell you in this video, but there will be other videos I will make that will be more specific about the different missions that are going out to space and the different findings that we will have, because those will be so important to understanding life in general, to understanding the role of water in that life, and to the fact that we are not alone in the universe. We will find that life, and probably pretty soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching today, and we'll see you soon.